Well, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to Screen Room, and uh, I'd like to introduce, uh, first of all, uh, the guest of honor tonight, who is Mr. John Whitney from Los Angeles, California. Uh, Mr. Whitney is an abstract filmmaker, uh, well known uh, throughout this country, in fact, the world. And uh, I'd like to also introduce uh, my colleague from the Carpenter Center at Harvard University, Mr. Eric Martin. Today in the screening room session, we're going to be looking at imagery, and we're also going to be taking advantage of the fact that Mr. Whitney is here to ask him questions and to make observations uh, as uh, they occur to us about his film. I think a great many interesting things uh, come up in his film, and uh, I would cite, uh, for example, uh, the whole question of what uh, Mr. Whitney does without content. He makes abstract films, uh, but they are full of form and uh, devoid of content. How does he appeal to our emotions? How does he affect us? Uh, because he surely does. I think at the very least I can promise you all that your TV sets are not going to look uh, like they ever have before. John, I know something about your background, uh, the fact that you were making films in the 30s, or late 30s, I guess, and the fact that uh, you were working in 8mm at that time. Uh, I also know that you were making abstract films in the 40s, which brought you a uh, first prize at uh, the Belgian competition. When was it? What year was that? That was 49, I think. 49. And that uh, you kept on working uh, at various devices uh, during the 50s, uh, all sort of bringing you to a point, it seemed to me, uh, a point that we're going to start at uh, in terms of imagery here with permutations, where uh, you had developed something which you call motion graphics, and you committed yourself to it. And I wonder if you could possibly take uh, a little time now, before we start permutations, to describe some of the more important influences on you or the more important events that uh, transpired during those years before, um, after the abstract films of Belgian uh, prize time and permutations. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, I'm sure we can get into further uh, explanations and descriptions of, of what abstract films I've add up to, but uh, it's true that um, after uh, the 40s and, and the period of, of those films, I felt that uh, either there was have to be some way of, of uh, making revolutionary new ways of, of doing abstract design in front of a camera, or possibly the, uh, some, there was some missing element, some sort of a machine. I began to think in terms of a design machine. I think somewhere you say that uh, the computer offers you the opportunity to uh, do a kind of periodic uh, uh, handling of, of visual material. Uh, could, you, could you describe what you mean by that and why it's important to you? Yeah. I think this is uh, helpful. Uh, yeah, it's it's difficult, but the the point is that um, uh, this beginning to search for uh, some sort of a machine, a design machine, uh, came to fruition when, uh, the, the, with from my point of view, with the development of the graphic display capability of the computer. Mm -hmm. And I have, uh, to put it in very simple terms, I look upon the computer as capable of producing. Um, uh, to, uh, capable of uh, manipulating a visual experience in almost exactly the same way that the whole family of musical instruments uh, manipulate oral uh, experience. Mm -hmm.